Well, that's a nice picture right there, isn't it? All right. Y'all have a good night. Hey, what's up, guys? Trapper Tom here, and I am going to be moving my raccoon and possum sets to my front field, cut corn, and just try a little bit new of a new area. So I'm gonna look for some good game trail kind of things along this kind of taller grass on the field edge, going towards the creek, and put put my traps out. And I'll uh, let you know when I find where I'm putting them. All right. Oh, well, he's hiding from me. Chance, do you approve? He said yes. Trust me. First one is just coming off of a trail off that field. You can see where my other traps are. Comes in, put a cage trap kind of right where it parallels the creek right here. So good trails going up and down the creek and from the field. We'll see if we get a hit. All right, what we have here, guys, is just an intersection of a bunch of trails coming out of that field and then paralleling this creek. And uh, kind of just like we did with that cage trap over there. So I got a dog proof hammered into the ground with a ground anchor. Just gonna plop it right in the middle of this trail. Bait it up with cat food mixed with tuna fish. I say cat food. It is cat food. But, um, yeah, just a little bit in the tube there. A little bit in the front. And then we'll move on down. Put one more cage trap. And, uh, dog proof. So. Alright. I'm going to put it on the west side of this trail. And that's because primarily the wind tonight is out of the west. So. I'm gonna try to see if we can get the scent where we want it. I'm looking for the bucket of food, and I don't see it. <laughs> Cause it's under my leg. So, get this thing baited up. Smelling good. A little bit here. A little bit here. But that is Set number three. All right, so just kind of past that ladder stand. Right there is a large cage trap on the low river cross, low water crossing. And then up here, spaced out, what is that? I don't know, 70 meters or so. Right by that tree, just about, is a dog proof. And then the last dog proof is going to go right where my car's at basically along that fence row there's a lot of small game trails up there and the cage trap is in between them so probably covering 150 meters or so and uh see if we can get any animals on this side of the farm all right and this is the last dog proof just going to put some of that tuna fish and cat food in there cover that chain up. I don't think I need to, but I'm a beaver trapper man at heart. Beaver trapper. I'm a beaver trapper at heart. That's what I meant to say. So got it rebated. And this one is just kind of right along this old fence row. I tucked it behind this growth here. So if there is a catch, probably won't see it from the road and I'm going to check it super early anyway. And now a little bit of scouting. I had a buddy find a mink yesterday, roadkill mink. Doesn't sound too crazy. However, it was crazy because we just got done talking about minks and roadkill and two things you don't really ever see. Or one thing I guess would be a roadkill mink. Anyway, he picked it up, looks beautiful. Looks like it just kind of ran into the road and decided to die there. Doesn't even look like it was hit. So, I want a mink. <laughs> I 
All right, it's pretty loud down here, but I think I got it set pretty good. There's a natural choke point for those critters following that edge. Should be able to meet right into that 110 right there. If it should be a little bit higher in the water, let me know, but I'm pretty happy with it, so we'll see what it looks like. This will be a fun one to check. Kind of the same setup here, guys. Another bottom edge set following this edge here. When the water is low like this, the water really only flows cleanly over these two outside edges down downstream. So I'm excited about it. Never done anything like it. All right, so we've got some better weather. I watched some a North American Trapper video with Mr. Probst. Um, I think I'm gonna give a shot for these canine sets again. So I'm gonna get this trap bed kinda a little prettier here, a little bit deeper than I had it before. There's certain things I just don't have. Wax dirt being one of them. So luckily it's not very cold here. At least that's what I'm hoping. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this trap bedded in nice and firm, not frozen. So putting my hole in right now in the, in the back side of that backer right here. And I'm gonna put some lure down there. Night latch. I really bed this trap a lot better than I've been doing, a lot more deliberately, and kind of get it to be really stable is the plan here. Well, that feels really good. Feels really good to me. So, here I would like to have wax dirt. I don't have it, so I'll use what I got and try to conceal this area up a little bit, cover this trap up. Um, I'm gonna go get some dirt. This is just dirt from the field. So there's less rocks and stuff like that. That's really all. And then like he, like Mr. Probst does, find that pan, cover it back up, clean up this hole. And those of you who watch my beaver trapping videos might recognize this. I'm gonna put some uh, caster down there because it's what I have. And uh, I imagine it will pique the interest of someone. At least that's what I'm hoping. So we'll, we're gonna load this thing up with a good amount. And uh, I think the last step, if I remember right, take a little bit of leaf something like that, put it in that hole, make these critters work for it some. All right. Here's the final set there with the trap bedded right under that. I'm gonna do the same thing over here and get this one back up and running. And Set number two, right on the other side of the gap here from set number one. Well, see what they do. All right, that's all the traps that are set now. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna trip over that stick. Oh, hang on now. Background alert, look at that, man. Ain't that something to look at? Minus this. That looks good though. Anyway, y'all have a great day. 
and we'll see you guys first thing in the morning.